Shana Tova. <laughs> On the day of Kol Nidre, Murray, a prominent member of his synagogue, stood in his synagogue's lobby near a large window. Murray was wearing nothing at all, except for a necktie, and everyone could see Murray in his glorious birthday suit. Congregants, employees, everybody. The rabbi walked into the shul just then, and he was, of course, extremely concerned. So he went over and said, Murray, are you OK? Murray replied, I feel great. Why do you ask? The rabbi said, to be honest, Murray, I'm worried about you. You're standing here in the synagogue lobby with no clothes on except for a necktie. What's going on? Murray replied, what's wrong with being naked? It's the way God created us. Adam and Eve were created naked, and I'm just continuing in their tradition. The rabbi said, but Murray, this is simply indecent and inappropriate behavior. You're embarrassing yourself and the congregation. If someone calls the police, you could go to jail. Murray replied, well, Rabbi, we'll just have to agree to disagree. It's my life, and this is how I choose to live it. The rabbi then asked, if being publicly naked is so important to you, why bother with a necktie? <laughs> Murray answered, what kind of Jew doesn't put on a tie for a kol nidre? Many of you know that during my term as chairman of Park Avenue Synagogue, I have generally avoided wearing ties to synagogue, other than on the high holidays or for our annual gala. I have nothing against ties or wearing ties to synagogue, and I have many stylish ties hanging in my closet that I wear from time to time. Why have I avoided wearing ties to synagogue? For me personally, I just feel a bit more comfortable when I'm not wearing a tie. When Eileen and I joined Park Avenue Synagogue over 20 years ago, it was a different time in our society. Reflecting the times, Park Avenue Synagogue was a bit formal. On Kol Nidre, many men wore tuxedos. Times have changed. Today, Park Avenue Synagogue is keenly aware that synagogue life competes with many other compelling options for our members' time. We need to give people a reason to engage with Judaism and synagogue life. Do you need to get dressed up to come to shul, or should you just come as you are? In our Park Avenue synagogue leadership culture, we say that we need to provide a warm and welcoming entry into our community. We say this a lot because it is so incredibly important. Today, you are welcomed at our synagogue, whether you wear a tuxedo or jeans, and we thank you for being here. Park Avenue synagogue is thriving not because of what people wear, but because of what people do. Here's what we're doing at Park Avenue Synagogue. Four years ago, during my first Kol Nidre address in the fall of 2013, I said that our facilities were bursting at the seams and that by the spring of 2014, we would have a plan to address that need. Only four years later, we're coming toward the end of our once in a generation capital campaign. The campaign that continued this past year with a focus on broadening participation. I'm thrilled to report that as of earlier today, we've raised $79 million from 1,309 families. This is an increase of 678 families since last year at this time. 79% of our members have contributed to the campaign. Never before in our 135 year history have so many members come together to support our synagogue. This is truly extraordinary. Thank you to each and every one of you who has participated in making this campaign so incredibly successful. And if you haven't yet participated, it's not too late. When we started the project, we envisioned a new lifelong learning center on 89th Street and a renewed 87th Street building that would together create a center for prayer, learning, and community. Earlier this week, we opened the new Eli M. Black Lifelong Learning Center. The official dedication will be on October 15th. I hope to see you all there. The center is a new, beautiful, modern facility that houses educational programs for members of all ages. The revitalization of our 87th Street building will start this upcoming May of 2018 and should be complete by the fall of 2019, two years from today. The sanctuary will remain open and functioning for services during the entire project. Much of our operations, including our staff, clergy, and early childhood center, will move to a temporary home in a school building on 90th Street between 5th and Madison,
directly behind our new lifelong learning center. We were fortunate to be able to find a spot that could fit virtually all of our needs at such a convenient location. Clearly, we've been doing a lot at Park Avenue Synagogue from the standpoint of bricks and mortar. We've come far, but we have another two years and a large renovation at 87th Street to complete. From the sanctuary building completion in 1927 to the Steinberg House completion in 1954, from the Shapiro House completion in 1980, and now 37 years later to the Eli M. Black Lifelong Learning Center in 2017 and the refreshed 87th Street building in 2019, it seems that somewhere between every 25 and 40 years, our community takes on a major building program. I'm reminded of a story. Frida has a heart attack and is taken to the hospital. While on the operating table, she has a near-death experience during which she sees God and asks if this is the end for her. God says no and explains that she's got another 30 to 40 years to live. As soon as she's recovered, Frida figures that since she's got another 30 to 40 years to live, she might as well stay in the hospital and have a facelift, nose job, <laughs> liposuction, and the tummy tuck that she always promised herself. Upon leaving the hospital, she went straight to the salon for a new hair color, a new style, and a manicure to complete the new Frida. But tragedy, some weeks later she dies in a car accident. When Frida arrives in front of God, she asks, I thought you said I had another 30 to 40 years. God replies, Frida, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Although the physical aspect of our synagogue is undergoing a major facelift, the mission and culture of Park Avenue Synagogue, our insides remain the same. As we move to the second half of our construction project, it is, it is time for us to ask what we are doing to refocus on our main mission, which is not about bricks and mortar, but creating an environment where relational Judaism thrives, where people show up for services and programming, but they stay for relationships. We continue to focus on our overall Shabbat services and programming from Friday evening through Saturday evening. With regard to the high holidays, we're in the fourth year of our extraordinarily popular Fifth Avenue service, which has allowed us to provide all of our members a seat on the high holidays. This is year two of high holiday family services, where families with children in kindergarten to grade seven can sit and pray together. Last week on Rosh Hashanah at 91st and Park, 500 parents and kids showed up for family services at 8.45 a.m. Our Young Family Program, Early Childhood Center, Congregational School, and Teen Programs continue to innovate and strengthen their offerings. Adult education is thriving with classes, Melton, lectures, Shabbat dinners, and the Shabbaton. Our exciting Mahadash, or What's New Programming, is being unveiled this fall. Mahadash includes outreach programs, small group learning, music salons, and book discussions. Travel education has continually engaged more congregants because it deepens and broadens the bonds of our community. We're looking forward to our December 2018 congregational trip to Israel. My family was fortunate to be able to be on the last major synagogue-wide trip, which was 11 years ago. That trip solidified our connection to this community and ignited my personal interest in getting more involved. Our inclusion initiative strives to make our congregation a house of prayer for all people. And our Interfaith Families Initiative will be working on pathways to conversion and serving the needs of interfaith couples and families. There is important community building in many areas, such as the Caring Network, the Men's Club, the Women's Network, Young Couples Group, Tikkun Alum, Mitzvah Day, Jewish Camping, and our Membership Committee, which warmly welcomes new members. There are multiple avenues to engage and be involved in this incredible community. To keep these important areas strong and vibrant, your annual support to our Kol Nidre appeal is critical. Synagogue dues represent only two-thirds of our expenses, excluding the schools. Last year, we raised a record $2.9 million from 1,100 families. That was the most successful Kol Nidre campaign in our 135-year history, even during the middle of a capital campaign. Our community is strong and passionate and continues to be even more so. Thank you for your generosity. This year, we would like to have 100% participation because every single contribution counts and is important. 
Where do we go from here? I can only answer that question in part because the other officers and I will be ending our five-year term at the end of June. It's been a great honor and privilege to serve this community, along with our President Paul Corwin and officers Heidi Silverstone, Mel Schweitzer, Jean Block Rosensaft, Andrea Bauman Lustig, Mark Becker, and Natalie Barth. Our outstanding clergy, led by Rabbi Cosgrove and Cantor Schwartz, educators, led by Charlie Savinor, and administrative team, led by Beryl Chernoff, will work with our next officer group and board more fully on the question of what's next. I can say this, though, developing and investing in our professional and lay leadership teams to build this institution has been one of the most rewarding aspects of what we do. Personally, stepping into the role of chairman before the start of a major building program and capital campaign might lead some to think that I drew the short straw. The reality is it was a perfect opportunity to get to know many of you individually, to meet you at services, or kiddish, or the privilege of sitting next to a bar by mitzvah child on their big day, paying respects at a shiva, or shaking hands at Neela at the conclusion of Yom Kippur. The individual moments of personal connection with so many of you have been incredibly meaningful to me. I'm going to end my final Kol Nidre address the way I ended my first one, by invoking our Park Avenue Synagogue mission. You belong to a community that seeks to inspire, educate, and support our members towards living Jewish lives. You belong to a community that aspires to foster deep connections with each other, our Torah, our God, the state of Israel, and broader humanity. You belong to a community that focuses on prayer, study, observance, and acts of kindness. You belong to a community that is warm and welcoming and meets you where you are. You belong to a community with a legacy of family and faith. You belong to a community. On behalf of the officers and board of trustees of the synagogue, we pray that all of our members and their families are written and sealed in the book of life and enjoy a life of health, happiness, and peace. The ushers will now pass through the aisles for those of you who wish to share your support tonight. Thank you.